We've done many videos and Substack articles talking about false positives for diagnostic test results, and in particular for the COVID-19 PCR tests. Unfortunately, many people, including scientists and top legal scholars, still don't really get it. So I've prepared this short video that hopefully will make it clear to everybody who watches it. Now as motivation, someone on Twitter just posted this article about a Portuguese court ruling against the legality of the PCR test in the context of using it to quarantine healthy people who happen to test positive. In this case, some German tourists who brought the case because they were healthy, they tested positive, and yet they were quarantined in Portugal. In fact, the story is from November 2020, because so it's not new, but it still infuriated me, because although the ruling was, of course, in principle correct, the judges still didn't fully understand and report on the problems of false positive results. What they said was that in the eyes of this court, a positive test doesn't correspond to a COVID case. Well, of course, it doesn't necessarily. And they said the two most important reasons for this are that the test reliability depends on the number of cycles used and that the test reliability depends on the viral load present. Now, while these are well-known and common reasons for false positives, the judges seem to have missed the elephant in the room regarding false positives, just as most people seem to do. And I want to help people see the elephant now. So what's reasonably understood is that the higher the cycle threshold, the greater the probability of a false positive. The presence of a different or dead virus could also increase the probability of a false positive. But let's suppose that we can fix those problems. Suppose, for example, that we can agree a sufficiently low cycle threshold so that, that issue does not cause false positives. And suppose that we can eliminate cross-reactivity with other viruses or dead viruses, etc. so that, that issue doesn't cause false positives. So we can assume we aren't going to get any false positives because of these well-known problems. Then, as for any diagnostic test, there will still be random errors due to faulty test equipment, human fallibility, etc. The question is, if the probability of these random errors is very low, that's the only thing that can cause false positives, does this mean the proportion of false positive results will also be very low? And most people assume, well, yes. And of course, that isn't the case. And you can see why it isn't the case by taking an extreme example. Just suppose we do random PCR testing at a time when there's no virus in the population, so nobody's infected. And let's suppose there's this low probability of, of, of the random errors occurring, we'll call that 5%, it doesn't really matter. But that means that 5% of the people will wrongly test positive. What we're interested in is the probability a person testing positive has the virus or not. Well, of course, if you imagine a thousand people tested, we know none of them actually has the virus. But 5% are still going to test positive, and that's 50 people. And so 100% of them who test positive are false positives. Now, that's an extreme example showing that even if you've got a very low false positive rate, most people testing positive are still false positives. So let's be more realistic and also provide some definitions. Let's suppose the PCR test is highly accurate in the following sense. If you randomly test people, then all of those who have the virus will correctly test positive. So we'll assume in, that's called the true positive rate. We'll assume that's 100%. And we'll assume this 5% false positive rate. So for only 5% of those who don't have the virus will wrongly test positive. So the false positive rate is 5%, or equivalently, we also say the true negative rate is 95%. So now Sarah let's suppose is selected to be tested and she tests positive. What is the probability that Sarah does not have the virus? Well, most people assume the answer is 5%, as that's the false positive rate. But what we are asking is not the probability a person who doesn't have the virus tests positive, that's the false positive rate of 5%, but the probability a person who tests positive doesn't have the virus. Now, the probability that a person who tests positive does have the virus is called the positive predictive value. So this thing here, this probability that we're interested in, is actually 100 minus the positive predictive value. But people also refer to such a result, slightly confusingly, as a false positive. And of course, most people assume that these two probabilities, this and this, are equal, but they're not. To assume they're equal is actually called the fallacy of the transposed conditional which you can read up on in the videos linked in the description.
But anyway, the positive predictive value depends not just on the false positive rate, but also on the true positive rate, and most critically, on the underlying infection rate, I mean, the population infection rate. So now, more realistically, let's suppose one in every thousand people has the virus. Again, imagine a thousand people then. Well, in this case, about one person will have the virus, because about one in a thousand people has the virus. And if that's the case, the test will certainly test positive for this person, because we're assuming a 100% true positive rate. But about 5% of the remaining 999 people without the virus are going to test positive. That's about 49 or 50 people. So let's just strip away those who don't test positive, so we're left with all the people who test positive here. So about 1 out of 50 who test positive actually have the virus. That's about 2%. Or equivalently, about 49 out of 50 don't have the virus. So about 98% of those who test positive are false positives. So in summary, even if you've got a low false positive rate, at times when the infection rate is low, the probability that somebody testing positive actually has the virus is still going to be low. So the elephant in the room here is the underlying population infection rate. Now the calculations here are approximate. In fact, what this was was a visual explanation of Bayes' theorem and the exact calculations can be carried out using Bayes' theorem and there's a link in the description to a relevant video for that. <laughs>